some people who've had a rough start in life, they seem to be able to go to another level. I didn't have a lot of options and I felt I had to fight for everything. That was definitely a driving force and I had to grow up and look after myself pretty quick. I've got to look after myself. There's nobody else that I can fall back on. So, you know, that gives you kind of, um, you're either going to make it or you're going to, you're going to fall. You're building armor. You're putting on a suit of armor and everybody will then treat you differently because you have some, you know, you look stronger, you look bigger. When I was in the detention center, it was like a crossroads. It was like, which, which way do you want to go here? You've had a taste of this and I'm like, I don't belong here. I didn't have a team, I didn't want to have a team. I want to I'll do it myself. I'm, if I win, it's, I'm responsible. If I lose, I'm responsible. And I'm not saying I didn't listen to anybody, to any advice or any information. I'll get some from here, some from here, some from you, some from him. And then I would shift through it all and, and see what made sense and ultimately what works. I want to spit on the floor and growl and sweat. And I've got to go back to the ghetto. I've got to, you know, go back to my roots and that energy. You know, whatever it takes. I don't know, I'm not conscious about it. I'm pushing myself to the limit. And if you're doing that, you're probably going to make some noise. Yeah, you, yeah. you brutalize yourself for a very short period of time and then you let your body recover and overcompensate and grow and that's the process. You don't enter this gym unless you're here to train. All right, nothing else down here. Just weights, machines, no saunas, nothing fancy. Follow me. Well, I love the training and I love to find the best way to train and I had a passion for it. So every workout from 1983 to 1997, I logged every single workout. Are you prepared to do that? Can you do that? And ultimately your genetics is like, is a limiter to how far you can go. Uh -huh. You know, I, I could practice basketball and play basketball all day long from 10 years old, but I'll never be a basketball player. With bodybuilding, everybody can improve. I really see bodybuilding uh, from a different point of view uh, from some of the other people that are involved in it. I believe, you know, it's 100% a sport and that's the way I look at it and I'm an athlete. Uh, I'm trying to achieve uh, the best that I can as an athlete and I'm not really interested in the, the glamour and the glitz and everything. You know, I don't believe that I'm a superstar and I'm going to Hollywood and only that kind of stuff. You know, I just see myself as a regular guy, a bodybuilder like anybody else. I had the theory of HIT training from Arthur Jones, from Mike Mensah. So the theory appealed to me because it was logical and that's the way my brain works. It works in logic and mathematics and straight lines. Uh, I analysed it and I noted if I train more frequently, if I do a bit too much, then my progress was just stopping and then I was cutting back. For this contest, I'm training even less. I'm probably doing a total of um, maybe three and a half hours a week in the gym of actual weight training and some of my competitors are, are doing probably that much every day. I remember seeing uh, Mike Tyson's son on the pads and he, you know, he looked, wow, it's a bit Tyson-esque, you know? Yeah. And they asked Tyson, you know, would he make a champion? He's like, no way. <laughs> like, why not? Because he hasn't lived my life. He's, he's been comfortable. So he's not, he's not going to be able to do it. He's not going to have that inside him. You know, I, you start as a fan, right? Uh -huh. And you know, I'm looking forward to watching these VHS that's came out, Road to Olympia and the different training. And I'm like, is this the really the way they train? I don't think so. I'm not getting inspired by this. No sport is clean. Sports are about winning with highly competitive individuals and they will do whatever it takes to win. Competitive sports is concerned with only one thing and that's winning.
I used to think I was like a warrior going in the gym and just got to slay these weights, you know. Instead of being, you know, on a battlefield with a sword, I'm, I'm in the gym and, you know, the weights are my kind of opposition. I'm going to bury them. The more weight you lift in strict form for a number of reps correlates to how big the muscles are. If you want to get bigger, you've got to get stronger. It's about change and evolution. And you have to be willing to change in life, otherwise you get stuck in a mold. To change, sometimes you have to be uncomfortable and you have to do and try things that's outside your comfort zone in order to, to grow and evolve. You can only hear music and smell sweat, and hear grunting and plates banging. I, I, was, I was just me stubbornly being me, you know, and not being able to be molded or manipulated. They didn't get it. Why I'm not that guy that's always wanted attention, why I'm not telling everyone how great I am and all the time and all this stuff. I was kind of introvert. I didn't like the limelight. I mean, it's part of it. You've got to go on stage and do it, but that's it's once a year, right? So I didn't want to show people what I was doing. And the guys in the gym that, that trained at Temple Gym, they'll tell you, even the guys that trained with me, my training partners, they never saw me without a top on. They never saw me without a top on. We're going to failure, so we're not going to stop just because we got to number whatever. The body doesn't know about numbers, it knows if it's like gone past what it's used to. And the last set is going to be like, like somebody's got a gun to your little baby's head and he's going to pull the trigger unless you fucking give 100%. It's life and death. One set. you ready because it's going to be rough like I said it's blood and guts it carries some risk and um, I saw people sacrificing everything I actually put a deadline on myself I said all right I'm doing all this yeah I'm British champion I'm pro now technically I can compete as pro I'm going to night champions my first pro show if I don't get in the top five I'm finished I'm finished with competitive bodybuilding You know, it's fluid, right? You should be always trying to learn more, evolve more. Uh, that, that's why we're here, right? We're all here for an experience, to learn lessons, to, to have experiences. I wasn't starting thinking oh, I need to do this because I'm small or I'm weak or I don't have a good body. I was doing it because this is a route to change my life. You can't then give that up, it's almost like addictive. Well, what if I go back to be that little skinny guy that you were or you think you were in your mind? Nobody will respect me anymore, nobody will love me anymore, or, or you know, something like that. I think that's it. So people get caught in that mold. I call it being crystallized. And I think that's what happens with a lot of bodybuilders. I'm a bodybuilder, I'm this guy, I'm Mr. Olympia, I'm this muscle guy. And I'm comfortable there, because I know that. But just the bodybuilder 
and you have to do and try things that's outside your comfort zone in order to, to grow and evolve. Do your research, have a look into it. Don't just blindly follow and do what you're told. Speak your truth. That's it, whatever it is. It's the attitude. This is the only vehicle you've got to experience your life. I've got a whole regime for my health. I do breathing exercises, I do meditation, I do stretching, I do cardio exercise, I go in the sun. So many things I do to look after myself. Yeah!